On this graphic on the left-hand side, you can see what is called the FRGF, and on the right-hand side, you can see the PVGF. These are both grapple points at which the station's robotic arm can latch onto, as well as the Japanese Kibo Laboratory's robotic arm. There's also what is known as an HPIU. This is the HTV payload interface unit, which will connect with the Kibo Laboratory's exposed facility. This allows power and uh, telemetry to be uh, handed over from this exposed pallet to the Kibo Laboratory itself. One of the major uh, items that this HTV is carrying up is the FHRC, which you see there, kind of the olive green colored uh, doghouse looking item on the left hand side. This is the flex hose rotary coupler. It is a piece of equipment that helps transfer and distribute ammonia across the station's thermal radiator rotary joints. These panels rotate around and the ammonia in the coolant loops helps get rid of the excess heat that the station builds up. This will be the third spare FHRC that will be located on the outside of the station. The first one actually flew up on STS-114 back in 2005 and the second one was delivered in 2008 during STS-126. The other major spare part on this exposed pallet is a cargo transportation carrier, or CTC. You see it in the orange there on the left-hand side. This is basically a big box of spare parts, like remote power controller modules and some, also some uh, video distribution units. The first CTC was delivered on STS-129 back in 2009 and is currently stored on the outside of the station. The HBCS that you see there on the left-hand side is the camera system uh, that will assist ground controllers and uh, also the station's crew as this exposed pallet will be put back into the HTV uh, at the end of its uh, useful life. That camera system will allow them to align this exposed pallet as it goes back inside the cargo container. The final section of the HTV is the pressurized logistics carrier. And this section is almost 11 feet long and carries all of the cargo that is used on board the station itself. This is the part that the crew will actually have access to. There is a hatch on one end of the HTV that the crew will be opening up and uh, going inside HTV itself to get all of the different uh, items that are carrying uh, that HTV is carrying up to the station. There are several different resupply racks that carry everything from food to water to experiment samples to clothes and other items that the crew will need. There are also two science racks on board as well as an experiment in human research, some physics experiments, biology, biotechnology, and also some education samples. You can also see some of the solar panels uh, in this diagram. HTV actually has 57 different solar panels that help power it during its flight. There are 20 panels located on the pressurized logistics portion. There are 23 panels on the unpressurized logistics carrier. There are 8 panels on the avionics module and 6 panels down there on the propulsion module. This once again a live view from the Tanagashima Space Center there in southern Japan. The HTV continues to uh, count down toward its liftoff coming up in a little less than 27 minutes. As we mentioned, the HTV is riding atop the H-2B rocket. It stands 186 feet tall. It is a two-stage rocket that uses liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as propellants. There are four strap-on solid rocket boosters, which you see three of there at the bottom. There are also two liquid-fueled engines on the bottom of the first stage. Soon after liftoff, the rocket will conduct a pitch maneuver, much like the space shuttle does, to steer it toward the southeast and it will head out over the Pacific Ocean.
It'll take one week for HTV to get up to the International Space Station coming up on Thursday the 27th. That is when a series of activities will take place. The HTV will continue to close in on the International Space Station until it gets a few meters out. The Expedition 26 crew will be monitoring all of these activities. There are several different station keeping positions that HTV will uh, stop and pause at for anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes. And once it is given the go-ahead, HTV will continue to close in on the International Space Station, placing it in range of the station's robotic arm. That will be used to grapple onto the cargo craft, turn it around. It'll then be steered around toward the... Uh, bottom of the harmony node which you see there there on the far right hand side is pressurized mating adapter number two that is where the space shuttle docks with HTV itself will go on the bottom side of harmony that is the earth facing portion of that module known as the nader side and then it will be berthed that is the exact same spot that the first HTV was berthed with what is a little bit different about this flight is that HTV is going to be relocated to the top portion of the Harmony node coming up on February the 18th. That will clear the way for STS-133 and Space Shuttle Discovery to arrive during its flight. Live footage from Tanegashima launch pad number two, where the HTV-2 Konotori-2 will be launched at 2.30 Japan Standard Time today. This video coming to us from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, that is a live view of the SCUBA uh, control center.